Greetings, Earthlings. Today I'm going to be discussing a deck that a lot of people have built and can be very open-ended. I'm talking about Inala, Archmage Ritualist. For two in Grixis, she's a 4-5 human wizard with the Eminence ability that allows you to pay one as another wizard enters the battlefield to make a token copy of said wizard, which gets exiled at the end of turn. While this ability is pretty fun and can lead to some nonsense, not enough is... Mm -hmm. Yes! Not enough attention is paid to her secondary ability, which allows you to tap five wizards to hit an opponent for seven damage. Of course, you have to have her on the field for that effect as opposed to eminence, which happens from the field or the command zone. But I very much made a point to utilize both abilities in this deck. So let's jump right in. Right off the hop... Let's note that this tap ability, much like a Zombie Lady of Scrolls or Galecaster Colossus, both of which are in the deck, bypasses Summoning Sickness as it's not the individual creature tapping as an activated ability, but it's essentially an activated ability that acts as a static ability, letting you do it at instant speed. The real meat and potatoes of Inala mainly is her Eminence ability, obviously, which can double up ETB triggers on cards like Mendelian Click, Archaeomancer, and Seagate Oracle. Can you tell I like Archaeomancer yet? Which we want to obviously abuse that ability with cards like Conjurer's Closet and Naban Dean of Iteration. You can use Panharmonicon too, but I currently don't have it in a deck as I kind of went a semi-budget route with this build. Something important to note though about both Naban and Panny's synergies is that Inala, with her, is they won't trigger on her, em I, uh, geez, on her eminence ability if she's in the command zone. It's only a permanent you control, which you don't control her if she's not on the field. It seems pretty obvious, but I've made that mistake a lot. Now, because I want to abuse her secondary ability, there are a lot of Timisms in this deck. For those who don't know, a Tim deck is something revolved around pinger tapping creatures like Prodigal Sorcerer and Fate Stitcher. Tapping abilities are very prominent and more of a mono blue strategy, but I like to abuse it here too. An underrated fun guy is Phallosage. Its ability triggers whenever he's tapped, no matter the reason. Attacking? Triggers. Tap to an Azami trigger? There's two cards drawn. It's a surprisingly underrated value engine in a deck like this. Some other fun tapping synergies I run are Information Dealer, Riptide Chronologist, Beguiler of Wills, Supreme Inquisitor, Cryptic Gateway, and Faces of the Past. Faces of the Past especially is a really hilarious card in the sense that so many wizards share different creature types. So say you have Apprentice Necromancer on board against a zombie deck. Send your wizard to the grave and tap down their entire field. It would affect yours too, but you would ideally do it on their turn and leave yourself free to an open field. I did mention Conjurer's Closet, and that's easily the Gilded Goose of this deck. Retriggering ETB abilities at end of turn and allowing you to reactivate Anala's Eminence, bypassing the exiling effect until the next end step. I also have Veil of the Night clad in here to deal some extra damage when my wizards leave the battlefield. The Intimidate is a nice bonus in certain situations. And of course, just as I did in my Hakeem deck, I run Step Through, which is even more vital in this deck because I can get out a zombie or any wizard that fits the situation and just get right to work. Some really annoying, tough to deal with, and sometimes infinite flickering combos in this deck contain ones like Timestream Navigator, where if you can pay the mana, the token has haste, so you proc the token, flicker the navigator with the closet, making another one, and then just proc it each turn for infinite turns. Another one involves a Sol Ring or any mana rock, dual caster mage, and ghostly flicker to make an infinite hasting army of dual caster tokens to overwhelm the field. You can do the same with Naru Meha, but the tokens won't stay. But with that infinite mana, cast something like Comet Storm to end the game. If you feel like dishing out a bit of extra dough, the combo of Intruder Alarm and Splinter Twin can also make infinite hasty tokens a la Kikijiki. You could also run Sundial of the Infinite to completely bypass the Exile and end of turn ability. Now overall, this deck runs at about a 5 or 6 power level with some really fun interactions without going off theme of wizards. That's right, all of this is attainable with strictly wizards as a creature type. And just like the last time, I'll have a deck list to this linked in the description on Moxfield. Take it easy.